Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, before I start, I'm just going to say a big thank you to all the supporters of the channel. Everybody who's been uh, with us from the start all the way up to the to the latest subscribers, you know, it's greatly appreciated. Again, thank you to everybody who comments on the videos and apologies that I might be a day or so late uh, coming back to you. But I will come back to everybody's comments, so please do keep them coming. It's, uh, it's extremely encouraging. It's, uh, yeah, just uh, want to say a big thank you as always for all that. But for this one, I think what we're going to do uh, is just readdress it. one or two things on this roof chop. Um, you know, I put that video out on Monday night, I think, or Sunday night, whenever it was. Um, and yeah, I do, you know, I'm really happy with the roof chop, to be quite honest with you. But, and I know a lot of people like the, what I thought of how to put a windscreen rubber in. And the method, in all fairness, you know, I just thought of it off the top of my head. I don't know if it's a, a, a known method or anything, but works really well. The only problem is that I, I don't think I use, I think the wire I used was far too thick for, for this screen. And it kind of reminded me once it was in there that, you know, it it looked a, it just looked too big, basically, for the for the opening of the, of the windscreen rubber. So, um, though I would do that again. Um, like I say, it works really well. It got all the, it got the rubber right into the tight gaps. I would just use um, smaller wire. And to be quite honest, once I took it out, I thought I'd just try something else before I go back to that. So uh, I think what I'm, I'm going to probably use is um, the, uh, some half round strip. It, it, I haven't actually used it on this chop yet. And I usually use this half round stuff for a lot of trim. I just couldn't figure out how to get it around the curves, but I think I'm going to set it on the inside uh, and work it round. I think I'm going to get the shape and thickness I wanted, and you know, it's not going to require too much cleanup. So, yeah, I think with that said, um, I'm, I'm going to get to fixing that. So we'll have we'll have this done in in this episode or this uh, this video and. Not too sure about the rear screen yet. I, I think that looks kind of all right, but it's how off balance once I put that front trim in. If it makes the rear trim look a, a little bit too big, then you know I might take that out as well. But I think in the second clip also, I'll show you a few bits and pieces I bought um, for this project. Um, you know, I know there's a, a lot of aftermarket parts being put on kits at the moment, and um, on this particular group build and you know they're all looking awesome but again we don't really have we don't really have that over here in 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 the same way as you do you guys have in the states uh we're just going to work with what i've got um a few little bits and pieces i've managed to pick up which will really help the build so uh, and it'll give you a bit of an idea of what direction we're going in so uh, without further ado i'm just gonna i'm gonna crack on get this uh these trims sorted and then i know I'm, I'm really happy with the, the build moving on and we'll just see where see where it goes from here okay i'll see you in a second right then well we've had about another hour and a half on this thing and i think i'm, I'm finally happy with it where i know i can 100 percent move on and not really worry about the roof too much anymore but we did end up uh, using the evergreen half round which i showed you um, did it in the same way. I've, I've done most of the other trim. Just used a, an old paintbrush just to to get super glue just right on the edges where I wanted them and not cover the rest of the model in it. But it was a bit tricky. I mean, reset. It's it's just difficult stuff to to get round corners without breaking. Uh, is any of the, the thin evergreen? I mean, there's only so much snap uh, bending that stuff can take. With, before you end up snapping a corner and but yeah we we slowly got it in there and I was just I was just literally once I got in it to the corners just pressing it in with things like files and just sub it to get to get it tightly tucked up in the corner so I'm not having any gaps anywhere and um so I think I'm think I'm a lot happy with that now it's a lot more to scale like I said I think you know if I Use wire of the, of the right size, really. I, I don't think it would have bothered me that much, but 
I think it was as soon as I threw primer on it, took that, that last clip of the last video. That yeah, I, I just it, if I know I know now that if if I ever see something that I'm not hundred percent happy with, I'm I'm just gonna go back and do it because you know I've got loads of models which I built in my past years from my early twenties that you know if I could have changed certain stuff then all this stuff which has annoyed me for the twenty years the twenty odd years which has followed and you know I'd just rather go back and and make it look right and I think that's a, a lot a lot better now a lot cleaner I think it's uh, once that's got a bit of primer on it I'm going to be more than happy with that so uh, turned out quite well uh, rear screen I, I, in all fairness I was happy with the, the rear the, the rubber on the rear screen but I did know once I'd done that one it'd make this one look too far too big so uh, and this rear screen was a, a lot more difficult um, you know, you got two very tight edges, two very tight curves to to deal with in in short succession. You know, it's it's all right getting it stuck round on here, but it's you got a curve there where you got to manipulate this stuff round, and then you got another curve in there. So yeah, it was a, it was a lot more difficult. Uh, I I did get a bit more glue around edges, but to be quite honest, you know, I can sand off glue, and it it was a lot easier to to get in rather than if I'd um, got a load of glue in between that gap up there which I'd have to contend with so uh, I want to too fussed and I think I'll be a lot happy with that all all over uh, all together now so uh, yeah I think we can definitely say next next uh, update we'll be we'll be tucking in them fenders like and starting on the the next ordeal of work which will be the front end and you know hopefully we can move on to to bed but you know like i said um i have i've been watching other people's videos you know doing seeing all the great builds which are coming together now like and you know i, I thought I'd, I'd need the more i thought about it the more i wanted a bit of direction with it just to plan ahead because there's so much work going to go into this body i don't want to get to a point where i've got to build the rest of the kit and I have no idea what I'm doing, so I thought what I'd want to do is I, I want to build this in the way like an old 60s monogram kit. Um, you know, just get that feel somehow of the of the older older 60s issue monogram kits we saw. So I think what I'm gonna do for first of all the donor kit really for the engine. And suspension or the front suspension is going to be the, the monogram predictor um, this is a well in all fairness it was it's a pretty mint kit but when I bought it somebody had already half inched the um, the bubble top canopy out of it and I, I have found another one since but it's so so manky and old I don't I don't think I'd get that curve right and I think it was missing one of wheels in this one but I, mean, I do have quite a few of these old monogram wheels, but yeah, the reason why I thought I'd use this one, one, it's um, it's an old, basically an old 60s tool monogram kit, but for front suspension, I, I, I do want to get that feel um, of the old predictors, the, the orange hauler and like the, the little coffin and all that kind of thing, which have workable front steering, so... I'm going to sacrifice the chassis, I think, on this one. Um, we're going to have working, working steering on this one, I think, and I'm, I'm probably just uh, going to end up grafting in a portion of this front front frame into the into the truck frame. Uh, I think that'll work best rather than trying to to make steering. I want it to work like Monogram had them working, so I'll somehow figure out a way to to get that in there and. I've kind of measured up a little bit and um and they, it, the wheels don't sit far too in or far you know or come out too far so I think with the way monogram set up this one should be a good donor just for a, a, a good frame switch on the front or the front end of the frame so I think we'll definitely be using 
the, uh, like I say, the frame will probably be using the engine. Uh, not too sure about the rear suspension. The rear suspension I might use from a something else. Um, probably, I think I've got a few of the Monogram 44, so I'm gonna um, use use the, probably the rear axle from the Monogram 40 and um, other things I've bought. Speaking of monogram 40 Fords, um, and this isn't going to be the donor vehicle. I picked up this the other day, um, and I mean, I wanted, I, I saw it and I, I fancied it anyway, but um, it wasn't, you know, one thing I sold my last original 40 Ford quite a while ago, and even though I've probably got four or five on the shelf, you know, builders. You know, they're, they're nothing like the originals really, and you know, this is a, a nice original and good restorable original, so uh, you know, without the louver dud and all that kind of carry on. Um, but uh, yeah, the reason why I bought this one um, was when it comes to the bed. I am, and the other thing, I am building this this one like the original, not like the the car that's just been rebuilt. There's Quite a few changes in the in the uh, restored vehicle, um, in the interior, and on the on the on the bed. You know, the bed has a, on the newer one. The bed has um, like just a, a straight line stitch uh, tonneau cover uh, with some other little details in it. But the original, and I was trying to get my head round how I'm going to do it, but the original. Had the uh, tucked and pleated, a uh, tucked and pleated bed cover, and I knew this one. I knew this kit had um, a pleated bed cover on it. Um, so I, I just so happens I saw this come up the other day, and it wasn't too expensive. It's probably one of the most expensive to trap had. Um, it's only like twenty odd quid, like so. Um, but now I've got a nice bed cover for it. Uh, granted, it's going to need trimming uh, to fit down inside inside the bed here. These Ford, uh, the 55 Ford uh, truck beds, a little bit smaller, like. But you know, as long as we keep it symmetrical, um, that's going to be, be a good part. So, uh, like I say, it's not quite um, fancy 3D printed stuff, but I very, very much doubt this build is going to get any sort of aftermarket parts on it it's all going to be doing what we can find in the parts box what we can what we can uh what we can manufacture ourselves uh from scratch but yeah uh, i did buy another high-tech bit of kit for this uh whether i use them or not i don't don't really know um but yeah this is my next high-tech purchase um I just got a couple of sets of, uh, I think these are like 2 mil self-adhesive pearls. I've got a, some in pearl white and I've got some in in uh, pearl gold. Um, but I was looking at the grill and I didn't know whether these might work for, for some of the grill work. So I thought I'd buy them, you know, they were, they were you know, three quid for... I don't know how many you get in there, like there's probably 100 or something, but you know, for three quid, you, you can't really go wrong. And I might use them on something else if, if not this one, but yeah, that was me, my next high tech um, purchase. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens with them, but like I say, we'll figure out the grill in, in probably the next couple next week or so when we start working on the front end or the. Um, and I've been meaning to get these for, you know, I had a, a box of these for for ages. And I think in one of the many house moves, um, yeah, I, I just, they got misplaced. But these are, these are just bootlace um, flutes or whatever you call them. Um, but these make great, like the, this size here, I think these are 6mm or something. I can't really remember to be quite honest with you, but. They're great, great for injector stacks, and I thought if I wanted a, a couple of exhaust tips on this, I might just, you know, go away from plastic and just use 
just use some of these um, as exhaust tips like I mean they, they are quite hard to pick up on camera but but like I say I mean they I think they're well known in the hobby just for making great great injector stacks uh, and there's what well, there's uh, on about 600 pieces in this and to be quite honest you're not gonna probably won't use any of the tinier ones but but they're good for small scale as well um good for small scale these things uh you know if you wanted injectors injector stacks for a small scale builds or or maybe even 164 i mean some of these are they're small enough for you know for your, for your die cast boys for your 143rd and your 164 so again about four quid from um and these were from a China special, you know, I've searched on eBay and the cheapest box of 600 was from China and for about £4, about £4 and a couple of weeks later, you know, they're here. So, so yeah, I mean, I think, um, yeah, that, that's kind of the direction that this one's going in. Nothing, nothing high tech. Um, kind of old school modeling so to speak um but you know that that's not to say that you know everything everybody else is doing you know I'd, 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 yeah envious as some of you guys you can get all the 3d printed stuff in you and the work which i've seen, been seeing done is absolutely phenomenal uh there's you know there's so many nice builds going on at the moment um yeah, I can't, you know, there's Hay Autos, you know, he's, he's gone to a lot of trouble of sectioning um, his cabin, what have you, and chopping his top. Um, I'm sure that one's going to be a really nice build when it's done. And, you know, everybody, you know, like I say, I just, there's just so many, many out there that you need, you just can't narrow one out at the moment. I think it's not going to be at all the final day. Um, but... But yeah, we, we're all going to see exactly what people have done. And in all fairness, mine's going to probably be the, the one with the least surprise because you already know what it's going to look like. So uh, I do have a, another idea up my sleeve. Um, it's kind to go along with the, the monogram theme, which I'm, yeah, the old 60s monogram theme. I'm trying to sort of work into this build, but I'll see how my time is. I'll see how much time this takes out of me and you know how far we got how panicked i am at the end of it um to see if i can get a little something extra in for that final day but yeah but the main focus is going to be this thing um i'm just getting it getting it done so so yeah um again thanks for listening to me waffle on for a while there will be a couple of um pictures at the end you know not too many i mean I didn't even try to to photo when I was doing going around the thing the, the rear because that was just so much more trickier than the front. It was I needed all my patience and time just to take care of that. But yeah, overall, glad I got that done today because it was bugging the hell out of me yesterday when uh, I was just out of the house all day and couldn't couldn't get on it. So I thought a couple of hours we'll get that done, and then we could just move on to the next thing. So. Whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, hope you have a good one and we will see you in the next video. Okay, see you, bye.